Good evening, meteorologist Emily Thornton here with the National Weather Service in Flagstaff, coming on this evening to tell you about some changing weather conditions we can expect as we head into the weekend and early next week. So first, let's take a look at the pattern change we're expecting. So if we take a look here, uh, for a long time, we have been under the influence of a high pressure ridge and we've seen well above normal temperatures and very dry conditions. And as you can see, this is all getting ready to change. So some things to note here, you'll see this area of low pressure developing over northern Canada. And then also you'll see an area of subtropical low pressure just off the coast of California. And we're very interested to see how these two features are going to interact for our incoming weather. So as we step through time here, you can see this low move into this main flow of this uh, colder polar trough that's going to begin to drop into the lower United States and phase with this subtropical low. Uh, you can see we have a split flow in our, in our jet stream here. Uh, we're not quite at the jet stream level, we're in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, um, but we are seeing this uh, split flow between the subtropical moisture and the colder polar air moving in as the trough deepens. So this is Sunday. Then as we get into Monday, you can see these features phase together. Again, we're getting that moisture pull in, and we're also getting the much colder air coming in behind uh, this trough as well as we get into Monday. So here is midday Monday, uh, and by midday Monday, we are very much under the influence of both of these features, and uh, this is when we're going to start to see big changes in our weather. But even so, uh, we're still going to see some significant changes on Sunday if we back it up here. Um, as you can see, as the system is moving in, that's going to bring in some stronger winds aloft, which is going to also bring in stronger winds at the surface. So we'll get right into that now. So as I said, as we get into Sunday, we're going to see our winds increase substantially out ahead of this system. So on Sunday, this is before the main cold front um, and before the main weather system really begins to move in, we're going to see our southwest winds increase substantially. So we can expect sustained winds 20 to 30 miles per hour and gusts 35 to 50 miles per hour in the afternoon. And that's going to um, mainly have the strongest winds along and north of the high terrain. So we're talking about the Mogollon Rim, the area from Flagstaff uh, into the White Mountains, and then northern uh, Apache, Navajo County, the Kaibab Plateau. Those areas are where we're going to see the strongest of those winds. But across the entire county warning area, we are going to see strong southwest winds on Sunday afternoon ahead of this system. So uh, we will see some crosswinds be possible on some of our major interstates like I-40. And we want to make sure you go ahead and secure some loose items in your yard and on your property because the winds will really be cranking. As we head into uh, the afternoon and evening on Sunday, we're going to start to see the first rain showers begin to move in across the area. So ahead of this polar trough that I talked about, um, that warmer subtropical air will be in place. So we are going to have pretty high snow levels at the beginning of this event, above 9,000 feet. So only the tops of the highest terrain of the mountains will be seeing snow on Sunday. And um, as we move into the afternoon and evening Sunday, rain chances are going to increase. So we're going to start out with the wind and then we'll slowly see the rain and uh, rain chances increase through the afternoon and evening. Then as we get into Monday, that's when we're going to see the main part of this uh, phased system come through our area with the strong cold front and the changeover from rain to snow for the higher elevations. Now on Monday, maybe some periods of mix of rain and snow, but we will see snow levels drop down to around 6,500 feet through the day. Um, and that's going to start early in the morning as well. We'll see snow showers in the high terrain. And um, below that, still going to see the rain showers and potential for some thunderstorm activity as well. The heaviest precipitation is expected to be along the front. Uh, and that's really going to pass through Monday morning and morning after, into the afternoon hours. And that's when we'll really see that heaviest band of precipitation. But what we're also going to see is a sharp drop in temperatures. So if you've seen our daily high forecast for Monday, you'll see a lot of areas are hovering right around freezing or below freezing for highs. So going to be very, very chilly Monday morning and through the day Monday. So go ahead and be preparing for that right now. 
but we do expect, as I said, the heaviest precip to, to pass during the morning and afternoon hours, and we are going to see that change over early in the morning to snow uh, above 6,500 feet with mix of rain and snow at times. And we are expecting accumulating snow, so we are going to see winter weather driving conditions above 6,500 feet as well, so make sure you're preparing for that as you make your plans for Monday. So here's what you can be doing now. There are still certain parts of the forecast that are uncertain. I'm going to get into that in just a moment. But here are some things you can be doing now. You can um, be sure where you can check road conditions. Um, to check the latest road conditions in the high country, you're going to want to go to az511.com. Uh, if you do have to travel, make sure you know what to put in your vehicle for winter weather. Um, we have a great resource there at ready.gov slash safety slash winter before that's going to tell you exactly the types of things you should have in your car on hand if you are going to be driving in winter weather conditions. Another great thing you can be doing is knowing which forecast office covers your area. So here in Flagstaff, for the Flagstaff office, we cover Coconino County, Yavapai County, Apache County, Navajo County, and Northern Gila County. If you're outside of those areas um, and you're in the Phoenix area or you're in Mojave County, uh, you're going to want to go and see which office covers your area so that you can make sure you're getting the, the most uh, impact forecast for your specific area. So you can go straight to weather.gov and we'll talk in just a moment about how to look up your location specific forecast, but that's also going to let you know which office covers your area. And then once you figured out which office covers your area, make sure you go give them a follow on Facebook and Twitter. That's where you're most likely going to get the, the fastest updates aside from just checking weather.gov. Um, we're going to be posting on social media, all of the offices are, letting you know the most um, up-to-date information and what you need to know. So another thing, again, once you have um, figured out which office covers your area, you can get a location-specific forecast straight from weather.gov. So you're just going to go to mobile, weather.gov or weather.gov if you're on a, uh, your home laptop or PC and you're going to enter your location in the search box for your location specific forecast. So if you go up to the top left of the screen once you're on uh, weather.gov there's a place where you can type in your specific location, your town, uh, and you can get that location specific forecast that's going to have high and low temperatures, wind speeds, snowfall amounts, rainfall amounts, all of those things. Uh, then also to the right of that, once you've loaded your forecast and you can see the seven day forecast, we have what's called a point and click map. So you can almost click straight down to your street level to get the forecast for your area. So that's a great resource. And uh, again, it is also available on your mobile web browser. Um, whenever you load mobileweather.gov, it's going to ask you for your location right off the bat. And you can get that location specific forecast information that way. So be sure to utilize that. Some other things you can be doing out ahead of uh, this changing weather, check your pipes, make sure that uh, nothing is leaking and that everything is winterized. Move your sensitive plants indoors. As we see those colder temperatures come in, they're gonna hang around for a while, well into Tuesday. So go ahead and make sure you move any sensitive plants indoors or cover them to protect them from the colder temperatures. And then as I mentioned, go ahead and make sure you're securing those loose items. Um, we are gonna see some very strong winds and things are really gonna be blowing around there on, on, on uh, Sunday. So make sure you go ahead and secure your loose items. If you have any Halloween decorations out, uh, trash cans, trampolines, things of that nature, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are not taken off on you on Sunday. So here's what's coming next. You're saying to yourself, Emily, you haven't said anything about snowfall amounts. Um, right now, this system is still evolving. So we have planned for tomorrow to do a more specific video on what we know and what we don't know about this system. So as things evolve and as we get closer, we're gonna to continue to give you up to the date information. And again, you can always go get your location specific forecast at weather.gov, so make sure to utilize that resource. But we have more coming your way as the storm gets closer and things continue to change. So thanks for joining me this evening, and we'll continue to keep you guys updated and let you know what's coming.